Hello and welcome to Miss How Loves Grammar. In this video we'll be answering the question, what is a comma splice? It is probably one of the top 10 most common grammatical mistakes used in everyday use of grammar in writing. So how is a comma splice actually made? Well, this grammatical error can happen when we're looking at joining two independent clauses. That's statements that make sense on their own. Usually we need to use a conjunction or a semicolon to join these two independent clauses. That's because a comma is not strong enough to link these two independent clauses. If we use a comma instead of a semicolon or a conjunction, this forms a comma splice. Let me give you an example concerning these items. We ran out of bread. I went to the supermarket, Fools drop. The sentence in bread is incorrect because I am joining two independent clauses and I should have either used a conjunction such as we ran out of bread, comma, so, that's the conjunction, I went to the supermarket, or I should have injected a semicolon splitting each of the independent clauses because it's stronger than a comma. We ran out of bread, semicolon, I went to the supermarket. Alternatively, with this example, I could actually have just separated them out into two simple sentences. We ran out of bread, full stop, I went to the supermarket. So a comma splice is a mistake. We should realise, before we proceed any further, that in order to join two independent clauses, we either need to use a conjunction, so words like so, and, or, but, or use a semicolon because it's stronger to link and bind our independent clauses. Now it's your turn. For each of the four sentences listed below, identify if there is a comma splice in the sentence and then consider how you could correct it. Bear in mind there are more than one correct option for this particular error. Hit pause if you need thinking time. So, Elvis was a great singer, comma. He never won an Oscar. We definitely have a comma splice here because I've got two independent clauses. I need something stronger than a comma to glue these two clauses together. So, the most obvious glue between my independent clauses is a semicolon, which would make the sentence read something like this. Elvis was a great singer, semicolon. He never won an Oscar, full stop. I could also say, Elvis was a great singer, but he never won an Oscar. That is a conjunction that's replacing the comma to avoid a comma splice. For example two, it reads, each sentence is wrong, comma, it has a comma splice, full stop. This also contains a comma splice. Each sentence is wrong, semicolon, it has a comma splice, full stop, is one particular answer. The other is, each sentence is wrong and it has a comma splice. Let's look at example three. Robin ran to the shop, comma, then she bought sweets. This also has a comma splice, so I've got two independent clauses that should be joined by something more than a comma. Robin ran to the shop and then she bought sweets, full stop. That makes grammatical sense and the use of the conjunction and is replacing the comma. Equally, I could do Robin ran to the shop, semicolon, then she bought sweets. Finally, Brazil wins football championships. Such a good team. This is involving a comma splice because these are two independent clauses, it would seem. But it would make the best grammatical sense if I said Brazil wins football championships and is such a good team. So here, I'm adding two words as a conjunction, not simply one. The big takeaway about comma splices is that they are the wrong way of combining two independent clauses. If you've got two independent clauses, that means they make sense on their own. You should be using something much stronger than a comma to join them together. 
It's either a conjunction, so a word like and, but, etc., or a semicolon, which is a much stronger glue between both of your clauses. As we already looked in our first set of examples, the other option with two independent clauses is that you make them two simple sentences. Regardless, it is never acceptable to use a comma splice. And the reason for this video is simply to avoid you being someone who makes this very common grammatical mistake. It makes it unclear for the reader, but also doesn't help differentiate what is important in each clause. Hence why we need to stop doing this mistake. Why not subscribe to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar for all things English, literary and grammatical?